What's up everybody? Welcome back to the FNG Academy. Buck here from Green Beret. Here to help you guys get selected. Alright guys, in this video we're going to talk about Green Berets versus John Wick. I'm super excited. I think it's going to be an awesome topic. Plus it'll give us a chance to talk about what kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat Green Berets are doing, how we train to deal with the fight, and the differences between training between Mr. Wick and a Green Beret. At the end of the video, I wanna know who you guys would pick to go into a gunfight. But before we do, do me a favor, let's get 2,000 likes on this video. Check out my book, Rising Above. Hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys, and this channel's growing like crazy, and I love it. Let's keep that going. All right, so let's talk about Green Berets versus John Wick. But first, let's check out a little bit of John Wick action. What in the flippity fuck did he just do down those stairs? I promise you one thing, you will never catch a Green Beret fucking front flipping down a flight of stairs. Holy way to get a broken ankle and be out of the fight. But before we dig in and talk about John's old flippity dip style of combat, let's check out some Green Berets courtesy of 10 Special Forces uh, as a recruitment video that they just put out of 10th Group guys doing their winter training. Check it out. Pretty badass, huh? I thought it was awesome. That's the kind of training that Green Berets are doing. And I don't know about you guys, but I like that slow, methodical approach. Instead of all of the flippity fucks around and rolling and, you know, crazy wazoo Hollywood shit. I think the real deal is what I would take all day, every day. But let's talk about what Green Berets are doing to train hand-to-hand -hand combat so they can be more like John Wick. One of the courses that we do is SOCP, Special Operations Combatus Program. Um, this is a great course because it gives us a chance to fight with a weapon slung around your body. I think that's one thing a lot of people neglect is fighting in full kit with a rifle slung around you. Um, what's gonna happen when somebody else grabs that rifle and now you're attached to it? How are you gonna fight with it? How are you gonna use it to your advantage? And how are you gonna avoid allowing it to become a huge hindrance during the fight? That's one thing the Special Operations Combatus Program is great for. It allows you to start fighting um, with your rifle. Teep kicks are awesome, barrel strikes. Using the rifle in a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation to your advantage. If somebody else takes your rifle while it's attached to your body, um, you learn to let them have it. It's attached to your body. You learn to transition to your sidearm and uh, use your sidearm to take them out from there. If your sidearm somehow fails and that doesn't work, then you start working on knife attacks. Like I told you guys in the past, we generally keep knives in the center line of our body so that way we could access it with a thumb, thumb loop, preferably, um, with your either hand, depending on where you're getting pinned uh, by a combatant. And then if you have to use your knife to stab your way out of the situation, then you do so. The thing is with these courses is typically they're like three weeks long. So you're not going to get anything sustainable from a three week course. It's usually to give you concepts, ideas, things to think about, um, and ways to enhance your training that you're doing on your own. So that way you could see what it's like in different scenarios. So it's really important for each Green Beret to maintain his own level of combat readiness and fight hand-to-hand -hand fight readiness um, there's guys that compete in jiu-jitsu there's guys that do judo so it's really just up to the individual another thing to think about as a green bray is you have to balance the risk of injury versus the gain of hand-to-hand -hand combat 
Uh, mostly we're going to be focused on using our tools, i.e. rifle, pistol, knives, uh, to keep the fight in our favor. But if it comes hand to hand, that's going to be on you to be able to take care of the situation. But again, let's say you're training jiu-jitsu all the time and you get an injury. Injuries are common, that kind of thing. I got a hurt wrist right now from uh, jiu-jitsu. It's just par for the course. But you get an injury that's bad enough to take you out of the fight when your boys are out getting in combat. That's the scary risk to training martial arts all the time. It's You're always worried about getting hurt because getting hurt could take you out of the actual fight. Uh, you could miss a deployment if you break an ankle. You know, so I avoided a lot of things, to be honest with you, snowboarding, um, anything that's too extreme, mountain biking, because I didn't want to get injured and I didn't want to miss the fight. That being said, we also have a lot of different courses. Um, I did go to one, it's called Lone Operator, and it was a pretty cool course. And again, it was just three weeks, so it's more concepts. But the concept that I got from that, the idea behind that course is that you're separated from your team and you're on your own um, and you need to survive and be able to get back to your team or an embassy or whatever. So it starts teaching you how to treat a fight, not the way that we're typically thinking about, where it's like, oh, I'm going to punch you and I'm going to try to end the fight. This course is really about teaching you how to end the person's life um, as quickly as possible because you're supposed to be in enemy territory and the last thing you need to do is be trying to end a fight with an enemy. You need to put them down as fast as you can um, and then focus on the next one because it's probably not by himself. So it really teaches you which body parts to attack to be as lethal as possible um, and how to end their lives as quickly as possible. And again, that doesn't mean that just because you did that course, you're like somehow mastered, you know, breaking people's necks and stuff. That's not the case. It's more of concepts. If you really wanted to be good at it and master the level of like John Wick, you would have to train consistently for years um, and be very proficient in that martial art. And that's up to the individual. But at the end of the day, the type of warrior that I would choose to go into battle with me is one that's slow, methodical, um, trains smart, takes cover, and not one that's flipping around, doing a bunch of flippity flops and spinny doos, and then hoping he doesn't get shot in the head. And I'm pretty sure he shot himself in the foot in that scene, but whatever. So for those of you who picked John Wick, Good luck with that. You'll probably be fighting on your own because one of his little flippity fucks down some stairs and he's got a broken ankle or he shoots himself in the foot. Be prepared to fight by yourself if you went John Wick. If you went Green Bray, we'll be a little more slow, methodical, actually take cover, try to survive to the next fight uh, and have a better chance for success. Just my opinion. I am a little biased, I have to say. Let's say you want to be John Wick. You love those movies. You think he's a total badass. What would you have to do to actually be like John Wick? Obviously, we know Keanu Reeves does a ton of three-gun, um, and he crushes. He's a great shot in real life. So three-gun competition shooting and having an immense amount of money for ammo would be step one. If you watch the movies, you also see that he's extremely proficient with judo throws. So I would say a high-level proficiency in judo, step two. Uh, he does a ton of jiu-jitsu. Step three, be high-level jiu-jitsu practitioner. I think that if you can get those three things down, Three gun shooting competitions, uh, high level proficiency in judo, high level proficiency in Brazilian jiu jitsu, and have some combat or actual fight experience, whether it be in a ring or in a combat zone. So that way you know that when the shit hits the fan, you're going to stay focused and you're going to be with it. That's what I think could build a John Wick style person. So let's say we take like Ronda Rousey in her Olympic level judo and her jiu-jitsu training over with uh, Gokar Shevichian and their sambo and that whole mash and then we teach her how to shoot like crazy. You're going to get pretty close to a damn real life John Wick. All right guys, so if that's your goal, go out and get it. Become John Wick. But I hope you guys pick the Green Beret because we're that much cooler and we actually kill people. Talk to you guys next time. And I can't see it clearly but it's all good I know